Hello, and welcome to this series of 505 Steam Turbine Controller Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will discuss the 505 hardware, and you will learn how to navigate the front and back panels of the controller. You will be working with the functions, features, and information found on the front and back panels of the controller often, so it is important to gain a clear understanding of how to use them effectively. The 505 hardware consists of a front display and keypad and a back panel label. Let's begin by reviewing the back panel label. The back panel is where all of the external wiring and interfaces are plugged in. There are two versions of the 505 with different external power input levels. Low voltage or LV input power, which is an 18 to 36 volt isolated DC input. This style of 505 has a green power connector. The second option is high voltage or HV input power, which can be an 88 to 264 volt AC input or a 90 to 150 volt isolated DC input. This style of 505 has an orange power connector, which is shown here. The operating range of the 505 hardware is negative 30 degrees Celsius to positive 70 degrees Celsius. When it comes to communicating with the external world, the 505 has several options. All connections to communication ports are located on the sides of the unit. These include four isolated Ethernet communication ports, four isolated CAN communication ports, and one isolated port for either an RS-232 or RS-485 serial connection. Now, let's review the input-output circuitry. The 505 hardware has two speed sensor inputs. These speed sensors can be either magnetic pickup units, also known as MPUs or passive probes, or active probes, such as proximity sensors or eddy current probes. For analog inputs, the 505 has eight channels that are designed for 4 to 20 milliamp inputs. These can be used with or without loop power. For analog outputs, the 505 has six channels designed for 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. The 505 has two actuator outputs, which can be configured as either 4 to 20 milliamp or 20 to 200 milliamp channels. The 505 can also accommodate 20 discrete inputs with or without contact power. In addition, the 505 has eight relay outputs. The 505 hardware complies with heavy industrial EMC requirements per EN 61000-6-4 and EN 61000-6-2 specifications. Marine type approval is based on IACS UR E10 EMC test requirements for marine qualified versions. Now, let's review the front panel of the 505 controller. The front panel display is designed to provide the user with multiple levels of access for configuring, calibrating, tuning, operating, and monitoring the turbine operation. The front panel has an 8.4 inch LCD display with 800 by 600 pixel resolution and a keypad. The numeric keypad allows users to enter numeric values and text strings directly into the controller when a configurable or programmable edit field has been selected. The left arrow key allows users to backspace and delete when entering text. In text mode, the up arrow key functions as a shift key. When making analog adjustments, if a user presses this key at the same time as either the adjust up or adjust down key, it will invoke a fast rate of adjustment. The brightness key is used to adjust the brightness of the screen. Pressing this key along with the adjust up or adjust down key increases or decreases the screen brightness. There are four LEDs on the left side of the front panel. These LEDs function as indicators and are used to display the 505's operation status. The summary trip LED is above tripped view. This LED will illuminate red if the unit trips. The summary alarm LED is above alarm view. This LED will illuminate orange if there is any alarm. The other two LEDs 
indicate an I.O. or input-output lock and CPU health. These LEDs are above mode. When the CPU LED is illuminated green, the CPU status is healthy. The I.O. lock LED is illuminated red whenever the control has no application running or the unit is in configuration mode. Let's review some of the keypad button functions. View navigates to the trip or alarm summary screen where time-stamped events are stored. Mode navigates to the user login and mode selection screen which allows the user to view current permissions, change the user level, and change modes. Escape allows the user to step back one page to the previously viewed page. Pressing this key twice will take the user back two pages, and so on. Home brings the user to the home menu for run, service, or configure modes. Pressing the key a second time returns the display to the run or operate menu home screen. The navigation cross keys are the primary keys for navigating from page to page or for navigation of the focus on any page. As in most displays, enter is used for executing actions. The red keys generally perform navigational actions, such as moving the focus or opening a different page on the screen. The green keys generally perform operational actions, such as enabling, disabling, starting, stopping, tuning, or adjusting values. The black keys are function keys that perform the action of the button shown above them on the screen. They can be navigational or operational. You now know the basics of the 505 hardware and how to navigate the front and back panels of the controller. Please be sure to view the other tutorials for more information.